I am Saranj. Um, I am pursuing an undergraduate degree in computer science and maths at the University of Delhi. And you guessed it right, I am from India. I like Python and Julia, and I like open source research software. And I maintain a few of them uh, listed out here PyBAM, Python Battery Mathematical Modeling, BackBot, which is just short for Battery Bot, and Vector, which is not an acronym. It stands for Vector itself. And I love contributing to a lot of them, uh, specifically the open source research software. You can learn more about me on the website. And again, from my shirt, it looks like I like superheroes. So going through the table of contents really quick, I will be starting with the introduction, covering basics of unit testing and code coverage, then running test and code coverage, but not in a sub-process uh, yet. Then we will be configuring a complete pipeline, including some YAML and some code code magic, which would automate everything, every test and the code coverage values. Then we'll start working with threads. We'll run these tests inside a thread and see if that affects code coverage or not. And I don't want to spoil it for you, so we'll look into that at that section. Then we'll move ahead to sub-processes, like what are sub-processes, why and how, and then some basic data structures that you should be concerned when you're using sub-processes while unit testing, then running tests in a sub-process, and this would be the part where we'll, we would identify our main issue, and then we'll push it, push everything to remote, see how the issue is still persistent, and then we'll work on a solution for that. All right, so what is unit testing? A very basic term. And let's get started with a brief introduction to that. As it says on the slide, unit testing means writing extra code to test your user-facing code or the main code that your user would be using. And this process should ideally be automated. So you should not run unit tests every time you make a change, but it should run automatically using a pipeline. We will be using the unit test library of Python for this talk. And there are a lot of Python libraries are shifting to PyTest and NoStest, but uh, for this talk, Let's stick to the unit test and maybe some other libraries next year. Moving ahead to code coverage. Again, as the slide says, code coverage is a percentage value that shows how much of your user-facing user code is actually covered by the unit test that you are writing. This helps you finding in finding missing tests, but again, in an automated way. So getting to a very small example of unit tests, let's say we have a feature that adds two numbers in a very in in the form of a very simple function, and we can write a unit test for that function. Uh, this is a standard format of writing unit test. We inherit the unit test or test test case class, and that enables us to use some assert methods that are provided inside that class. And uh, there is a whole list of assert methods that you can go to a particular URL and check it. I think I have linked in my slide. Yes, and then we check some. Uh, edge cases to make sure that our unit tests are working fine and they are not just a hoax. And then the last if underscore underscore name, the double underscore statement works is again a pretty standard way of how we write unit tests. This basically ensures that our unit test runs when we are running a module and we can run all of them at once. So if we go ahead and write Python hyphen M unit test with a hyphen V, that is basically to prettify the output. It shows us all the unit tests run well. We can do the same thing with coverage, run with the coverage run command, and then pass hyphen m unit test and hyphen v, hyphen v again for uh, prettifying the output. And it does the exact same thing, but it generates a dot coverage rc file with it. And then we can use that particular coverage rc file uh, using the command coverage report. And the so if we do with coverage report, it would show the coverage of the calc module that is calc.py and test calc.py, but we want to omit the test calc.py code because that is not a user facing code. That is test that we wrote for a main feature. So we can omit it by using the hyphen hyphen omit option. And then it shows us that our coverage is 100%. That means we're covering everything that a user would be using. There are other commands such as coverage HTML, which you can use to visualize the coverage even better. and uh, a lot of these options are available in coverage documentation. So I'd highly recommend you to check that out. Then we move on to why unit testing and code coverage, because uh, now why should I increase my already huge open source workload to include unit testing and code coverage reports? So there are a lot of points that are uh, that makes them that makes using 
uh, unit testing and code coverage a very good candidate. So first, it, it makes your code more reliable. That means uh, when a user comes to your code base, they know that the code is tested. And if a sudden breaking change happened, then you would know how to fix it. Or if even you don't know how to fix it, you would at least know that a sudden breaking change, change has happened that is making your code crash, which you'll know through unit tests. And it obviously improves its your code's quality alongside testing it. It makes your code more maintainable. That means it makes it easier to accept code contributions from other people. Now you don't have to worry about if that code contribution is breaking your existing code base, that would be tested out by the pipeline that you write and hence making your uh, code base more maintainable. Then it lets you check faults. So if your existing code has a sudden breaking uh, change or a new feature breaks something, you'll know exactly where the feature is breaking something because that particular unit test will be failing. Then it lets you keep the production life, keeps the production master or the main branch safe and uh, the, your user base won't go down. Moving on to coverage, it definitely pushes you to add more unit tests, but it also tells you where the unit tests are missing and how you can improve the coverage of your code base. And then it also helps you identify any bugs in your code base, but not always the bugs can uh, make way through unit tests without being detected. So in all, it's a very good addition to your code base and most of the open source libraries use it and you should too use it. Maybe not in your personal projects, but definitely the projects that other users would be using. So don't be this person a person who does not write any unit tests and like would do anything to skip writing unit tests or this person who writes the first line of the project and unit tests it unit tests it or like is addicted to unit testing that means they write unit tests before even writing the code instead maintain a balance so you should go up through this pyramid so first the first priority should be writing basic features of your project that means your project should be usable then you should add and improve the unit test, which means your project would be reliable and the users would trust you even more. The next step would be to automate the te these tests and coverage. So you'll know which tests are missing and you don't have to worry about running them again and again. Everything would be automated. And the last step, or according to this tutorial or the talk, this the last step would be making the unit testing, making unit testing mandatory. So now you don't have to worry about a random person accidentally breaking your project. Instead, whenever they add a new feature, they would have to add a unit test along with it. And then we can explore more uh, better testing suits, such as integration tests, which test different parts, which says how different parts of your code base integrates together. But uh, we won't be talking about that in this talk. So finally, let's move to setting up a dummy project for this talk. A very simple project, a calculator file named as cal.py and, uh, and test for that. Uh, name test underscore carry.py. So right now everything should work fine and it should give me 100% coverage. So uh, let me see. Okay, is, is the code visible or is only the presentation visible? Uh, I have VS Code on my screen, but I'm not sure if it is visible. Um, just a minute, I'll share my complete screen. Or I'll share the VS Code. Great. I think the screen should be visible. Yes. So uh, a very basic calculation or a calculator file with some tests written for the same. And according to a slide, it should work very well. So if I go to 
So let me open up the terminal. And let's seed into dummy project and uh, all right. So the first step would be to, we were using the omit feature of coverage.py inside the command line, but a wiser option here would be to add a dot coverage dot coverage RC file, which would also be beneficial for uh, the upcoming session sections of this talk. So uh, you can specify the coverage configuration in this file and coverage.py would automatically note that up. It is written in the classic normal or any format and it has a lot of sections and a lot of fields which can be exported through the documentation. So if I go ahead and run the coverage using this command again, coverage run hyphen m unit test and then hyphen v for the pretty output. It executes all the tests. It generates a dot coverage file that we discussed about. And uh, these this coverage should be ignored when I go ahead and write coverage report because that is how we have configured it. Yes, it ignores that file and everything works out. Next, let's go to uh, GitHub and create a new repository for this. Then we will be automating everything so that we don't have to care about the test. Let's name it EuroPython. And if you have code code already configured, it would show you the option here. But if you don't, then you can just sign in and it would automatically come up here. We create a new repository. Till then, I'll set up a Git repository locally, adding files to the staging area and committing stuff. Let's say initial commit. All right. We can go ahead and push that local repository. And I already had a git ignore in place to ignore the cache and dot, dot coverage file. Dot coverage file should ideally not be kept in your uh, version control system because it is changed every time coverage runs and you'll be running coverage a lot if you have a bigger project. So everything working fine. And we've created a remote repository. Next step would be to configure an actual CI pipeline. For this, we'll be using YAML and CodeCove. So GitHub provides this really nice tab actions. And we can configure whatever we like. GitHub gives us a few suggestions. We don't want a Python packet, but we want a Python application. And we'll configure it. We can do everything here inside this particular editor. And let's say I want. So this would run on every push and on every pull request on every particular branch. We don't need the permissions thing. And for the jobs, let's say we want two jobs. First would be checking the style of the file uh, with flake it, the lint, linting part, and then we would be <clears throat> running the actual unit test and uploading the cover coverage report to, uh, let's say, code curve. So for that, I already have a file in place. So that I don't have to write it all from scratch right now. So the style job, I can copy it here. It would set up Python 3.9. Uh, interesting, interestingly, set up Python at the rate v4. The version 4 requires you to specify the Python version. Here we could have skipped specifying the Python version if we were using v3, but v4 requires you to specify the version. It does, it installs, upgrades pip, installs flake it, and then just runs flake it. So if there are any style issues, it would automatically give an error. And let us paste that here. All right. So the build part, again, let's stick to Python 3.9 so the libraries don't give any error. And for installing dependencies, a good rule is to use Python hyphen M before pip to avoid any particular errors, especially in a remote system. We don't need flake it, we don't need PyTest, but we will be using coverage. And we don't have any requirements file, so I can skip that. Linting with flake it, we've 
done in a different job. And then we're not testing with PyTest, rather we are testing with unit test. So let's say run unit test. And generate coverage report. So here we can stick our old command in coverage run hyphen m unit test hyphen v. This would generate a coverage report, but then we need to make sure that it gets uploaded to CodeCove. And speaking about CodeCove, I think it this would be a really nice time to go to the CodeCove and like sign in if you don't have an account already. I already have an account, so it will automatically redirect me there. All right, so these are all the repositories which are connected with GitHub, and this would appear right there. This is how we were generating coverage report locally, the dot coverage file. Next, I think this step yeah, to make it a bit more realistic, we'll add the need style, the needs field here just to make sure that if our style check fails we don't unit test it so we want users to write the code pretty first and then test it the next step would be to upload the coverage the coverage file generated here to code code for that we should have an action here a code code action yes so let me check out the usage yes it shows that i can basically put it like this and then some additional arguments or option that I can pass in, which we don't have to care about right now. Next step would be to add that particular action here. So let's say upload coverage report and then put this thing here. And just to be on the safer side, let's use V2. I think it looks good. Let's rename it to Europython. And just to make sure that it is good and I haven't done any like made any typos, I'll copy paste the already written one. I think both of them are identical at this point. And let's rename it this to CI. So this would run on every push and every pull request on this particular repository, no matter what the branch is. This would first check the style. That means run flake it. If that errors out, it won't proceed ahead. If that passes, then it would proceed ahead and test everything and upload a coverage report. So uh, making the complete, making a complete CI pipeline. You don't have to do anything manually. Everything is done automatically. All right, let's commit this directly to the main branch. And ideally, this should have started some checks here if you go to yes the actions part is running this would first run the style part if that passes it would go to the build part and if the build succeeds you should be able to see the repository here in code curve all right let's wait for it sorry spoiler alert it would work the build check has started So the test went well, I think. Yes, everything passed. And then the upload coverage report to CodeCove also succeeded and the result URL is available here. So you don't actually have to go through there. It would take some time, but CodeCove should automatically show that repository here. I already have a test repository from yesterday here. Yep, it should take some time. All right, it's here. It shows that the coverage is 100%, which we were seeing locally. And if I go to files, it shows only a single file, calc.py. And if I open that file, it would show me which particular lines are covered, which are all the lines. This would also, this is how the interface would look like if you do coverage HTML, but that would look locally. Instead, if you want to automate it, you use coverage. Or another option is coveralls, but I personally prefer coverage uh, code code mode. All right. Our 
a repository is here as well, EuroPython. If I open that up quick, it should show me, yes, I have made one commit that has 100% coverage, uh, the root directory and only one file, some pretty graphs, and again, that particular file and how the coverage is for that particular file. All right, so everything works right now, which is good. Next, let's follow it. So I think, yes, let me create a PR here to show you how code can work better. All right, let's close this one. Yes, Code Cove comes with a nice patch to let your user know, users know how much coverage your repository has. Let's create a markdown batch and go to a repository doing everything on the remote repository, create a readme file. Let's, uh, let's name it to Europython talk, add a code coverage batch and also the GitHub actions come with a nice looking batch that would tell your users when the repository is down or when the tests are failing and when you can, uh, when everything is passing. So copy the status badge. All right, so if I do this right and I create a new PR. So yes, the test should run automatically because we configured our CI that way. First of all, the style test would run, and after that, the build would run, which is unit testing, and it's running over with pull request and push. Now, as we're running out of time, I think I'll move ahead alongside as a test run. And everything should work out of the box if we check out that PR. Right. Um, yes, going to the next part, which is threads. Now, one might want to run the unit test in threads. This would come with a min some minor changes in your code. So for example, you cannot return directly from threads. Rather, you'd be using a thread safe data structures like uh, built-in Python dictionaries, or usually most of the built-in data structures are thread safe. You will be appending that value or uh, adding a new key and adding the value here, and then you'd be accessing that uh, in the thread here itself. So. Uh, here, when we are asserting and we want to make sure that everything works fine, we are running the test inside a thread, passing arguments like this and additionally passing a dictionary to capture the return values. If I run the test and code coverage uh, on this particular code, it would run as fine as it was running before. So because the because threads usually threads are meant to share memory and it won't affect coverage.py in any way though. Output won't be affected in any way if I use thread or if I don't use thread. I won't actually be running this because we're running uh, late on time. Why threads? Why would you want to run tests inside a thread? First off, it would allow you to execute tests parallelly. A lot of open source software use this to execute tests parallelly and save the CI time and resources. So, for example, if you have a really large uh, testing suite, then you might have to pay to get up to. I allocate you a larger amount of CI time per month uh, so that you can run your tests without any failures. Uh, if you want to check out the examples, then you can search this particular expression on GitHub and you'll find a lot of repositories use threads. Uh, some additional things you'll need to take care of when you're using threads with uh, unit testing is that ensure multiple threads don't access a single variable at a given time, which is you don't have a consumer producer consumer type of problem and you don't run into deadlocks etc and then use thread safe built-in python dictionaries or other python uh, data structures which uh, built-in data structures are thread safe to return values and everything would work if you would use it all right so let's switch to the pull request that we made so all the checks are passing and in addition there are two more checks which are automatically added by code code which shows the coverage is not affected at all and the coverage report is full that means 100 percent and some additional information so this is everything is automated if someone comes ahead and contributes contributes to your repository you don't have to care of running the test and running the coverage manually instead everything is done here i can go ahead and merge the pull request so that a repository looks a bit nicer uh, yes Yes, the badges are working very well. 
everything is passing and code cover is at 100%. Next, if we go to sub processes. So sub processes, the memories are not, the memory is not shared, but there are specific uh, functionalities through which you can share memories, but we won't be discussing them here. Here rather we'll use a queue to return values and this would, this queue would be taken out of the multiprocessing uh, library itself. So this is how we would be running our test. We would be creating a process, running the targeting the add function, passing the arguments and arguments will be passing the queue additionally to get the result. And then we'll save dot assert to check if the result is working fine. All right, I think I'll run this quick. I'll move out the calc and test calc out. All right. And then move the process one in and calc process. All right. I think. Yes. So wait. Um, I think the calc process one disappeared. All right, so I might not be able to run it right now because of the time shortage. So if we run this thing, we will note that our coverage value drops down. It goes down to 60% around, you know, going from 100% to 60% because coverage cannot automatically detect if you're running, detect as if you're running them inside a sub process or if you're using multiprocessing or any other processing library to run the uh, test inside. Now, why are we using subprocesses when the coverage value is going down and it is making our lives difficult? Again, you can run tests parallelly, saving CI time and resources both, but this is a bit more inefficient than threads if you just want to execute tests parallelly. But you can also step stop tests midway if they're taking too long and restart them. So if you're having some probabilistic tests in your repository, you might want to use subprocesses to run that. So again, a lot of repositories use subprocesses, but some of the few and few ones to name, PyBAM, BadBot, GNII, etc. And PyBAM and BadBot are the ones that inspired this talk to let others know that you can use subprocesses and how they would affect the coverage value of your code base. And again, use multiprocess saved data structures like queue and maps to return values. This word does not work ideally, but I guess I cannot get it to run right now. And I don't have enough time to figure that out. So why are we? Why will we be getting the wrong results? Because uh, this is what how the how coverage .py's documentation puts it up. So measuring coverage in those sub processes can be tricky because you have to modify the code, spawning the process to invoke coverage .py. So coverage .py would not automatically know that you are running tests inside the sub process. Rather, you need to invoke coverage .py to run the tests. Uh, a fix for this. Um, I think let me add that and run the coverage quick so you can actually see that the coverage is going down. So I'll have a test repository here. And yes, the calc process file. So everything is same as it was before. Instead, we're just calling these tests out of a uh, process so here. And we're using queue to return values. Let me run the uh, coverage run hyphen and unit test and with the hyphen V. It runs all the unit tests fine. And if I do coverage report, the coverage actually goes down. Whereas we're testing everything. This is uh, this part of the site that it does not work. Uh, naturally, rather you have to configure some stuff. The first configuration would be to add these particular lines in your coverage RC file. That means telling uh, coverage.py that you're running parallelly and the specifying multiprocessing in the concurrency part. But here you can replace this with the particular library that you're using to spawn a particular process. So if I go to, all right, let me do one other thing. I think I'll push this up onto GitHub to make sure that CodeCov gives the same result. 
all right uh, process and then we push it shows yes sir, set up stream so now that we have another pull request i'll open this up quick right i might not have an ending line there So till the time the test runs, we can move ahead. And if I add these particular lines, the coverage dot by should automatically note that I am running tests inside a um, let's say sub process, but any library that could be spawning that sub process, you can replace that library here. And if I do the same commands, running the tests and generating a coverage report, or like some repeated stuff here. So it first of all it goes ahead and creates different files for different processes that and these files are named differently because of this particular option parallel equal to true. Now we can use coverage combined to combine these files. Uh, and then a classic coverage report, which would so coverage combine combines all these files into a dot coverage file that we've been seeing till now. And then the coverage report gives us 100%, which is what we were expecting. All right, the test passed. Uh, the code curve thing might take some time, so I don't want to take more time here in this session. This was the config fix. How you can fix this particular problem by editing your configuration file. And then if you edit your CI and push it up, then Wodco would eventually notice that your coverage is wrong and it would error out on that pull request. Another fix would be to pass the concurrency option in the CLI itself, but this particular thing works only with multiprocessing. That means if you're using some other library to, let's say, spawn a subprocess, then this would not work and you should stick to the, uh, the configuration file fix. So if I go ahead and I remove this part here, concurrency is equal to multiprocessing, then I can still run this thing and pass in concurrency here. It still generates a lot of files. I think four of them are for different subprocesses and one of them is a general overview file. Then we can coverage combine these files and the coverage report now gives us 100% coverage. So and if again we push this all right i think port of yes i think we did not edit our so if everything went well and if we edited our ci then the port cove part should give us an error here that the coverage is dropping whereas we are testing everything inside sub processes all right so our problem is solved now so we can run some uh, tests inside a sub process and inside a thread without uh, like taking down the coverage of a code base and keeping it all looking pretty for the users as well. And everything works now. So things to take away from this session. It was a bit rushed, but I hope you got the basic gist of it. Uh, we went through basics of unit testing and coverage. Then we had some fun with CI pipeline using GitHub Action and code curve. Uh, then we started running tests inside threads, inside sub -process, processes, and then at least locally we discovered that the coverage was going down. It would definitely happen there, but uh, happen on the remote, but uh, maybe sometime, maybe an, uh, I'll have it for another talk next year. And then the code coverage, how we can fix that uh, error that we're getting using two particular solutions. Uh, editing the config file and then passing the configuration directly into our CLI if we are using multiprocessing as a uh, as a library to spawn subprocesses or uh, to spawn a multi to spawn different multiple processes. And yes, that would be it. Thank you. So.
I know it was a bit rushed because I couldn't figure out the echo part in the starting of the presentation, but I hope you get something here. Yeah. Sure.